Hi there, everyone. I hope you are all doing great. I am delighted to be back with this third video about my new Tamasta OneNote set. If you haven't seen the first two yet, do not hesitate to take a look. The first one is a short video revealing the set without going into too much detail. And the second is a detailed review of the dimensions, finish, functionality and features that the Star Range has to offer. This third one is about how it sounds, also detailing the heads I chose to use. So if you want to know the shell's dimensions and specifications or hardware features, I invite you to go check the second video. You will find the link to those videos in the description right below. With that said, let's get straight behind the set. Before changing anything on this set, it was important for me to mention a detail that I didn't include in the previous video, as it concerned the sound of the drums. From the moment they left the factory, all the shells have been meticulously tuned by Tama. I wanted to let you hear how it sounds as soon as it's set up, without having touched the tuning of any of the drums. One small detail. As I usually don't record my two bass drums at the same time with microphones, always using my foot blaster triggers, I was only able to install microphones for the main bass drum. But believe me, both bass drums are in perfect tune. There is no decompression port on the bass drum's resonance head, and I'm not going to make one as I'm going to be using mesh heads and visually, I prefer to have heads without holes. When I record a bass drum, I like to have one mic in the bass drum to capture the attack of the bitter and the explosiveness of the hit, and another mic on the resonant head to record the sustain and depth of the drum. This will bring out the bass drum's low end. About the microphones, a Shure SM7B is used to mimic the sound of an Intelon microphone by pointing it at the area where the bitter is going to hit the head. A Shure Beta 27 is positioned on the resonant head to capture the depth, sustain, and low end of the kick. All the toms are recorded with Shure Beta 98 amp mounted on the tom stand and not on the hoop to avoid unwanted vibrations. A Shure Beta 57 is used for the snare top and a Shure SM57 for the snare bottom to have the snappy sound of snare wires. A stereo pair of Shure SM81 is also used for close room sound to add ambience. This room sound is quite interesting for the snare drum in particular. This is just my opinion, but I found that the sound of a snare drum is more natural when listened to in a room than through a microphone, as if your ears were very close to the drum head. The difference is that you will hear a sound with a lot of ping and sounding quite thin with only the snare top microphones. Whereas with other head or room microphones, you will hear reflections that give life and sense of depth. Now let's listen to how the toms, kick and snare sound with and without the closed room microphones. The recording you are about to hear is totally raw with any processing whatsoever.
here is how my Tama Star One Note set sounds out of the box. As you can hear, all the toms are tuned in harmony. The sustain is long and the notes has a very good hold, especially on the deepest toms. The sound is warm, with plenty of bass without masking the attack. The bass drum is very punchy yet very precise. The explosiveness of the drum is clearly felt and having a full resonant head with no internal attenuator lets the drum resonate at its maximum. The snare is beefy and tuned very low. With no dampening, it lets the copper shell resonate and all the overtones from the metal are present. If you've been following me for a while, you've always heard my drums with low tuned toms. Of course, the dimensions of my Star Classic had a lot to do with this. Moreover, my Star Classic Bubinger snare, which I used before this new Staphonic Copper snare, is tuned much higher than this one. From then on, it is all matter of taste and preference. The heads mounted on this star drum kit are single ply and coated. It's the exact opposite of the heads model I've used for years and that now define my sound. I like my toms to be tuned low with little sustain, especially on the rock toms. In my style, with very fast toms walls, it is preferable to have a defined attack and a sound which doesn't spread out too much, masking the attack of the toms played afterwards. For the floor toms, I love them very deep and fat sounding, projecting booming low end. Hearing how well the shells in the Tamasta range resonate with extended sustain is something very important to the versatility of the drums. In fact, it is much more polyvalent to have shells that naturally resonate a lot, because we can then control the sustain with all the models of heads and accessories available to us. That's why I'm extremely excited to be changing all the heads to get my new set just right for me. And with my recent endorsement with Evans Drum Heads, I was able to receive as a welcome package all the heads and accessories to make this Tamasta my own. So, about the heads, I'm going to install the Evans DB0 on my two bass drums. These mesh heads are made with a single ply of shockwave mesh. This mutes all the sound so that I can record my bass drums with my footblaster triggers without having any kick bleed from the other microphones. It also keeps the natural feel and bounce of an acoustic head. If I had to record a kick drum without trigger, I would use the EMAD heavyweight bass drum head. For the toms, I really loved the Evans EC2S on my Star Classic Maple, so I keep this model on the batter side of all my toms. I have also decided to use the Evans EC Rizzo for the resonance side. I can't wait to discover the sound on one lot and to hear the impact that the two harmonic dampening rings will have on the sustain of the drums. For the snare drum, as the subject is much broader, I have decided to split its sound research into two future videos. One on the choice of heads and the second on the choice of wires. I'm going to make a detailed comparison between six different Evans snare drum heads, all to ply and all geared toward powerful drumming and aggressive music. For the snare wires, I am going to produce a shootout of eight different pure sound models. We will be discovering together the impact and sound of different materials, the number of strands, and also the shape of the part holding these strands. With all that said, I'm going to take the time to change the heads on the bass drums and all the toms. Compared to my previous set, which was made with only three toms, I'm going to have five toms to tune to each other. If you don't know how to do it, I have put together a series of videos explaining how to tune drums, from bass drums to snare drums and toms. I leave you the links in the description below. Let's meet up again after I have tuned everything up so I can let you hear what it sounds like. I am back with this great sounding and beautiful drum kit. I will let you listen to how this tom sounds after changing the heads and tuning them as I like, so you can compare the before and after. 
Of course, the bass drums won't have any sound, but I want to show you how silent the sound of these mesh heads is. I have also tightened up the snare drum heads so that it responds a little more to my preferences. And of course, I fitted my snare weight dumper to reduce the overtones. I don't know about you, but I love this sound. It is very precise, with little sustain for maximum attack, while the low end is still very present. The mid-range is already pre-EQ'd thanks to the walnut, which is a wood that projects powerful bass with a precise attack. The Evans EC2S and EC Rizzo heads also add a great deal to the sound, smoothing out the sustain and bringing out the width and production of the drums. There is so much power coming out of those shells. The low end resonates throughout the room and sends shivers down our spines. I am going to take the time to play around and adjust the tuning if necessary. Tell me what you think of the sound, whether you can hear the difference between the basic heads and the new ones. Let me know about your drum kit, its configuration, its dimensions and the heads you use. See you soon for two videos dedicated to the sound research of my Tama Staphonic Copper Snare Drum. Next step, a comparison of six event heads dedicated to aggressive music and powerful hits. So if you don't want to miss out, do not hesitate to subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on my social media. Cheers! <laughs>